Hey. Oh. It's right. episode 33. I should have checked. It's either 33 or 34. It'll be labeled correctly. I feel like it's 33. 33 of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. I say it's episode 11 of me wearing this shirt. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this, this shirt's probably about nine deep at least. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm on a much shorter laundry cycle now. Because you have a, your own washer dryer. No, because uh, Sue likes to do laundry and I don't. Mm. So what I did instead of doing a lot of laundry is I have 58 t-shirts. So I do laundry once every two months. Right. But, but she likes to do it. So I have the same four shirts freshly washed all the time. So this one is making the rotation a lot. But you don't have your own washer dryer? Not yet. Oh, you coming, are going to love that. Coming soon to a new apartment near me. Yeah, we have our own washer dryer. No one else can use it. They could if they asked us and wanted to come over, a friend or whatever. Right, but you but, never wake up to it and go, oh, shit. Yeah. I, I got to come back in half an hour. Yep. And I don't wake up to the thing where I'm like, oh, I forgot about it and find all my laundry on the side of it. Oh, the worst. Yeah. That, you know, or like, oh, I don't, I don't have any quarters and I have to go back upstairs and get quarters. Yeah. I haven't needed quarters in a long time. Oh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, New York life, you need a lot of quarters. Because <laughs> you have your tolls and your parking meters and your laundry. Plus, I like to get a soda from a machine once in a while. Sure. Yeah. So you find that you have a giant jar that's only nickels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Which the nickels are good if you want to play that game where you throw nickels at a wall and right. the winner keeps the nickels. L they're literally perfect for that. Yeah. They're built Doesn't for that. I think that's the only reason they're still in circulation. Yeah, I think uh, everybody gave up that game, but then the nickels didn't go anywhere. Nope. They're still here. So now we all have smartphones. Yep. And then against the wall on an app. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and the Mint is still hoping that game will come back, but. No. Well, I, uh, I picked a song and I got to tell you, I'm pretty sure I'd never heard that song before in my life. <laughs> the song you picked? Yeah. How'd you do that? And uh, so then, what'd you pick it based on if you've never heard it? The lyrics. Ah. Because last week, when I was looking for something to make a clue for, I looked at those lyrics and I thought, I don't know that I've heard this song. If I have, it's been a long time. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I kind of enjoy these lyrics because they're kind of silly. Yeah, but I think they're good, silly. There's one part that's ah, super great. <laughs> <laughs> Silliness wise? Yeah. And, yeah. and sort of uh, either, I don't know if it's intentional or not, just kind of sexist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you could omit the words uh, kind of, I think. <laughs> yeah. Just it was, I'm going to say it's of a certain era and in yeah. that era it was kind of sexist yeah in, it's yeah sexist yeah in this in kind this era sexist. it's probably gone all the way to it's not sexist anymore because people would just think oh this is probably supposed to be a song bojack horseman released that's probably what this is <laughs> right this is meta sexist yeah we're we're supposed to know this guy's being ridiculous. Post sexist commentary. Yeah. Pre postmodern. Right. <laughs> sexism. But I picked this song and having not listened to it, it's I think delightfully weird. It's super weird. I think it's bad. <laughs> That's what I think. I think it's. Uh, musically fun, it's peppy, um, and I do like most of the lyrics are enjoyable. 
I think the when in Rome do as the Romans do is such a lame hook. Yeah. Uh, that it, I mean, I, I laughed out loud when I listened to this song. Yeah. I had it. Here's a thought I had, but I'm going to actually ask our viewers to do something. Pause right now. Go listen to this song. I got a link here that I will post. There's a link in the description. Right. Go listen to this song. And then I'll then un unpause it and come back and I'll tell you one of the first things I thought. All right. So. All right. Welcome back. If you did that. I know Bruno did. He's religious about every aspect of this. Yeah, yeah. He watches the way it's supposed to be watched. Um, infrequently. No. <laughs> <laughs> and alone. Yeah, right. So here's what I thought. It is either a television theme song oh. for a show yeah. called The Romans. <laughs> Right, the family, last surname, Roman. Yep, and they struggle to make ends meet, but they yeah. love each other so much. It's, uh, yeah, a little Roseanne-ish. Yeah, or, and you have to tell me which one it's more, or it's a movie starring Bruce Willis, where <laughs> he plays a detective blues singer like oh. Gary Roman or something. And it's a vanity project because at one point, the only reason he signed on to do this movie is at one point there's a concert and he sings this song. <laughs> and it's not a good movie too because he sings the whole song and they're like, oh, all right, well, we got Bruce Willis. I guess we got to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. That's which, pretty is good. It, which is it more? Because boy, is it a TV theme. It's a really a TV fucking theme song. I think it's more a TV theme song. And I like the other story better. <laughs> <laughs> is what I'll say. Yeah. It does sound like to me, it's sounds like Bruce, uh, Billy Joel wrote this song and thought to himself, I can put this on an album. I wonder if Bruce Willis would record it for one of his fucking harmonica albums. <laughs> right. And they went back and forth and they missed each other on phone calls and just like time ran out and it's like, oh, fuck it. I'll just put it on my album. I'll just put it on my album. It, you'll notice. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple beautiful things that I'm almost certain aren't in any other Billy Joel songs. I think at least one. Oh, I like that. The, um, the uh, backup singers. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, are re they get real backup singers who came in to work that day and probably were like, well, getting paid. Right. And I always think that about uh, background or when you hear like, uh, or you see a, a pharmaceutical commercial or something and they have a song about the like product and the side effects. I, right. I, I, I always will picture the band in the studio with the cans, recording it over and over and over again, and people getting tired and background singers who didn't know what they were coming in for. And they're like, no, you just have to say like Zyfaxin, just like, but harmonize on Zyfaxin. Uh, uh, pregnant women shouldn't handle broken tablets. Just sing that part. I just imagine. I can't, anytime I hear that, like an original piece on TV, I can't help but picture the band singing oh. about constipation and tiredness as a side effect. Because, you know, they figured out people are too stupid to know what fatigue is. So remember every commercial, like the, one of the side effects would be fatigue and you don't hear that anymore. Now it's, they say tiredness <laughs> because I think people were Googling what is fatigue. That's great. You, you, by the way, are kinder in your, in what you imagine, because you imagine the band doing that. Right. I'm always kind of mad that a band did that. Oh, sure. And I'm always like, aren't you musicians? Which is a dumb thing to think because they also have to pay rent. Sure. 
<laughs> yeah, it is. A, it's kind of a yeah. dumb thing to think. It's a, or at least mean spirited thing to think. The ones that drive me nuts is the ones where there's a guy playing guitar going, Steve Harvey Jones. And I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. When, when he's in the commercial. Yeah. That's like, oh, you could have done this without being seen, which I would respect a little more. Yeah. There's, it's old blues, man. I've seen that version singing about something. Uh -huh. And then um, Wayfish Ingenue. Like sure. oh, yeah. yeah. Apple-ish. Yeah. Singing this damn song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then also very well-known country singers oh yeah like that, you absolutely don't need this they well, had I promise yeah. is i wonder if you can get away with it as a country artist more than you can a rock and roller because you definitely see country artists do it more often it seems that way for sure i think it's like current country guy or washed up <laughs> pop star yeah it's never like current pop stars i bet it's because lord here's yeah. lord for uh zyfaxon right no in 30 years maybe yeah uh, yeah and then she's not singing she's just talking about you know ever since my hip replacement and then yeah, yeah. right oh. oh wow i hope <laughs> i live long enough to see that well, Zyfax and Ron Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. So a couple things, too. The other thing is prominent saxophone. Yes. But sure. terrible. <laughs> it's, it's this song. I'm sorry. This song is on Stormfront. Yeah. It meant to be on Innocent Man. <laughs> yeah. It got. I think it got cut from an Innocent Man. And then it just sat in a drawer and he was like, I can, I can only think of nine songs for Stormfront. <laughs> well, do you have anything in the drawer? Do you have a song in the attic? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jam in here. And he says, well, I have nine more songs. that sounds fifties ish. Pick one. <laughs> I'm like uh, this fine. This one. Yeah. Yeah, probably pick, they go, it needs to be exactly this length. Okay, that's the criteria. We did it. <laughs> it uh, yeah, the saxophone is such, I'm, I'm not saying the guy doesn't do a good job playing the saxophone. I'm saying it's the most yep. cliche saxophone usage I've ever heard. From a guy who uses a lot of saxophone and saxophone solo. Yeah. Usually really effectively. Um, it seems like, did you just figure out, is this the first time you've stuck a saxophone in your song? No, you've done this a million times, usually really well. And this is just like, yeah, it's very, it's like somebody tried to write a Billy Joel song. I just thought of how I'd like to describe the saxophone. A perfunctory saxophone. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just barely, it's just, okay, here's a guy. And he's done. <laughs> and then the, the backup singers are hysterical to me. That is great. The backup. I wonder, I feel like the backup singers might be what got it cut from Innocent Man. <laughs> <laughs> Because he actually used other people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this is all you, Bill. It's it's weird. And then um, I will give it credit. It it has a proper ending. Yeah. But do you notice that the proper ending is it looks like or sounds like I should say that they were it was gonna fade out and then the, just the last time they repeat the title they just dropped out his vocals <laughs> yeah. yeah and that like, creates yeah. an ending they turned off the spigot and then you, you if you listen carefully you can hear someone say the romans is filmed before a live studio <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I want to hear the uh, the version at the end where it's just, do as the Romans do. And it's the freezy thing at the end. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just a mailman ringing the doorbell and the yeah. show starts. I, so I'm not the guy who goes to a movie and enjoys a bad movie, ironically. I don't do that. That's not me. I think that's a waste of time. But I have on occasion done that when it was the perfect. So um, um, Wild Hogs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and oddly enough, Wild Hogs and Old Dogs <laughs> are were great to see in the theater knowing they were good. Old Dogs in particular. I couldn't stop laughing at this woman a few rows ahead of me who, because I could not figure out what she was laughing at. <laughs> great. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> so that's this song. It hit it. I like this song for that reason. <laughs> okay. Great. It's cartoonish. It's like, um, it's like something by Frank Sinatra. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And yeah. it is so late in his oeuvre. Like, you you know, if you listen to him over the years, you kind of see him learning about life and telling you what he learned and learning more and more nuance as he gets older. And then this comes along, <laughs> it's like, clunk. <laughs> yep. I didn't learn nothing. Yes. Now, honestly, because wasn't it fun to listen to knowing we were going to talk about it because it's just cartoonishly silly. It's like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, it's the perfect song coming off of last week's Heavy Lift. Yeah, fair enough. Yes, it is a good uh, palate cleanser. It's you. You just watched Schindler's List. Right. And you're just like, ah, dude, where's my car? That's all I want to see. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to start us off because I am absolutely delighted. <laughs> and even just the other thing, I think when you ask why I picked it, when in Rome is, we talk about how he sometimes does cliche things lyrically. When in Rome. Just, even for idiomatic expressions, it's hacky. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the most idiomatic expression. <laughs> I mean, our dads said that a lot. Yeah. We're old. The only way I think if it was when in Rome and it was about how he got to Rome and didn't do anything he was told to do. That's nice. That's a hook. That's a hook. That's a, that's a pitch. And then the twist at the end is I should have. I missed out on a lot of great experiences because when in Rome. Right. I had Thai food. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like guarantee, early. I guarantee if he did that song, he'd, he'd still be mad at somebody in that song somehow. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be his fault it didn't work out. That's right. And by the way, I hadn't even thought of it this way. You're right. This was cut from an innocent man. That's what this is. Yeah, I think so. Oh, God, yes. That's also why it sounds kind of unfinished. The production values are weird on it. Oh, yeah. I, I think he they probably were trying to get a hold of him to come in and work on it some more. And he was like, oh, well, I don't like that song. Just put out what we got. Yeah. <laughs> That ain't the song I care about, and I have no no expectations that that song is going to do nothing. <laughs> so he's not an idiot. No, he is not. In our made up scenario. Yeah, <laughs> he's bad with money, but he's not. Yeah, but I think, man, I think we nailed it because this song. Anyway, <laughs> well, I see you in the morning putting on your pretty clothes. <laughs> and I watch you do your makeup like they do in all those fashion shows. Dumb! <laughs> Dumb! Because I look, my lovely lady puts on makeup in the morning sometimes when she goes somewhere. 
yeah. nobody doesn't like the fashion shows when they're getting ready for their day. Right. It's like he doesn't know that all, almost every lady is putting on makeup in the morning. Yeah. I yeah. Did, I, oh, I, I see you eating a sandwich like they do on cruise ships. <laughs> <laughs> and also everywhere, but all right. Yeah, I see that you're brushing your teeth like the big athletes do. <laughs> <laughs> then you turn to me so that I can see if you put yourself together right. Well, she's insecure because don't count on this guy. He thinks you're at a fashion show. <laughs> yeah. And you go away and you're gone all day. That's a weird turn. I, that's unintentionally kind of a fun turn of phrase. You go away and you're gone all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, those are those, those kinds of turns of phrase I enjoy. And I think that's just an accident. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's saying the, two, the same thing in two slightly different ways. Yeah. And sometimes I like that. I just like the rhythm of it. But I'm like, yeah, you needed a whole sentence, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and there wasn't one to be had so you <laughs> it rhymes like hell yeah then you go away and you're gone all day but i know you're coming home tonight and when you're home darling all you've got to be is you that's nice uh-huh and when in rome do as the romans do so uh. I think the workaday world is Rome in this case, right? Like the office is Rome. Yeah. So when you so he's telling her, when you go to the office, do office stuff. <laughs> because if you do home stuff there, <laughs> you'll get fired. God, that's great. I also like that it, it's like a very <laughs> uh, it's like he is autistic or something and he's uh, assuring you that he understands that you know I know you're going away but I also know you're coming home tonight right like I have object permanence <laughs> I understand that you continue to exist once you leave the apartment or it's the perspective of a very smart dog. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I'll leave the autistics out of this. Either one. I, I get what you're saying. Is like he's like, look, I know. Hey, I know I had that car wreck, and I had a bad concussion, but I'm aware. You don't have to comfort me. I know you're coming back. Just don't ask me who the president is. I keep getting that wrong, but I know. No, you're coming back. I know you're coming home. I also, again, any song that starts with well, I appreciate. <laughs> Just a little ramp into the lyrics that a lot of guys need. Yeah. It's like wetting your lips. Well, it's wow. like how you find your key if you're not a very good singer. Well, right. oh, I'm right. cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I also, by the way, listen to this song. I've read the lyrics more than once. I can't tell you how it goes. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd struggle to sing it, but I bet within two or three more listens, I'll know it ridiculously well. Because <laughs> I have a real soft spot for uh, 60s, 50s and 60s trash. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I love, and now I love this person. So I say trash, but only because she wrote this way intentionally. A lot of times I love Leslie Gore. Oh yeah. And one of my favorite songs is sunshine lollipops. <laughs> yes. And it's fantastic. years ago I said to Paul, we were in a ra we were listening to it on the radio. And I said, I want to see the Vietnam movie where this is the song. <laughs> And then I started to sing along and, and picture and I started to act it out. And he went, do you know all the lyrics? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's such a good pitch. And it made you feel bad for being prepared. 
Yeah, because and that is and Leslie Gore. I do not like. Ironically, I just like her. Yeah, so I want to preface this by saying that because I've almost accidentally insulted her by comparing it to this song. I really think she was working on so many more levels. Oh God, than, yes. Than anybody yeah. <laughs> around. And I'm just happy that she got to come out before she passed and had a nice lady to be with because you know the songs I love her from her when, when she's like I have a boyfriend song <laughs> right. which she probably did because you had to yeah but that's for another podcast <laughs> so it's our other podcast you had to have a boyfriend it's <laughs> <laughs> a great title it's a, it's a good title every week we talk about a talented woman in history who were like I'm pretty sure she didn't want to be with fellas and then we talk uh, about their work. And the best part of the, is huh? the best part is that it works for every period in history except for like the last 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the best part of our podcast, that show is you had to have a boyfriend, is we mean well. And every other episode we say something problematic because we picked a topic we shouldn't be talking about. Absolutely. So and, it slowly dawns on us that the whole thing is problematic. Yeah. <laughs> and crazy. I I inevitably go, I mean, she was a pretty girl. And I'm talking about somebody who fought in the war. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not much worse than the first verse of this song. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're up. Uh, all right, this is fucking great already. Well, it's all right if you're tired when your day is done. Oh, well, that makes sense. That tracks. <laughs> You can see when you look at me, you're not the only one. Made it about himself. <laughs> it's a cold, cruel world for a working girl, but oh. you can't let them see you cry. Who said she was crying? Like, look, I had a lot of uh, work to do today. I didn't say I'm a fucking emotional disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Goddamn. It's a fact in life, a fact of life. Now man and wife work full time to just get by. Social commentary, don't mind it. Yeah. Can't get along in a single income anymore. Although you certainly could in the era where this music was prominent. Yeah. The, the thing that jumped out at me too with this lyric is, I'm like, he's trying to relate to a class of American that you always sound like you're sort of talking down to when you try to relate to them. Yes. Because yeah. he's far removed from, you know, needing any income for the most part. Sure. And even like his parents era, like if your dad was a salesman, great. Yeah. You have a two bedroom house. Yeah. Um, where am I? It's a fact, <laughs> fact of life. Now man and wife work full time to just get by. And when we're home, all it's going to be is me and you. But when in Rome, do as the Romans do. <laughs> Does he think that she doesn't know that? He's told her twice already. So it. Because it is, that idiomatic expression is straight up advice. Yeah. Um, which will I get to in the trivia question. Oh. Oh. Uh, but it isn't like, I understand that when you're in Rome, you have to do as the Romans do. He's saying like, yeah, I know when we're home, it's me and you and we do husband wife things. When you go to the office, please, don't wear sweatpants. Yeah. And watch uh, soap operas. You'll get in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, when she's. I know that. So he's got the worst questions too. She's like, ah, today was right, was rough. Did you do the typing? Yes. What are you asking me? What are you... <laughs> yeah, I did the job. Okay, good. 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 I... They're gonna. They're gonna think you're one of them. That's good. That's good. Did you file? I, I am one of them. Awesome. I work there. 
Okay, so you filed. You filed things. Yes, I filed things. Do they have a like a big black heavy phone? And so you, when that rings, you pick that up, right? It's not that heavy, but, but yes. Uh, your arms are so skinny, though. <laughs> Oh, she can eat this food. <laughs> um, I'll just do this little three sure. line, whatever this is, because it's weird. I've done some strange things I never thought I'd do before, but if the strain brings happiness more or less, more or less, all right. What is the strange thing I've done some strange things I never thought I'd do before. Let my wife go to work. That is weird. I assume. That is odd. He finds it very confusing and strange that she goes to work. And she's going out all dolled up. You know, with all that makeup. <laughs> That's what they like at the office. Oh, Lord. That's pretty That's funny. Yeah, that is a, Lord. a weird divergent because I've done some strange things I never thought I'd do before. When he says that, she goes, wait a minute, I'm just filing. What are you doing? Because like I- Yeah, I'm, what's job? You, what's your office? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I don't know, I want to go to a warehouse down by the docks. Yeah. And oh. one time they had me bury a guy. Oh, but when in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing is that expression. Nobody ever says the whole expression. Yeah. That's how fucking well known it is. Yep. That's how hacky it is. Don't even have to say the whole thing. It's like, uh, take my wife, please. Yeah. You don't have to do the whole joke. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember it's your that's insane? Do you remember your version of that when you did stand up originally? My version of take my wife. I don't. You used to go take my wife, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, mocking uh -huh. bucks. Do it for the mocking bucks. <laughs> that's right. Then I don't mind masquerading with all those other fools. I don't mind the games I'm playing because I've learned the rules. And when times, well, mm -hmm. when, yeah, boy, banal, right? Yeah. And when times are tough, I've got just enough. If you're standing right by my side, this had to have been the song he wrote before he was like, no, no, wait, easy money. And then he wrote easy money. <laughs> right. And that's better. Yep. And one that, time. I understand easy money better than going to work. Yeah. Yes. It's a better complaint about the same thing. Express <laughs> better. I don't mind the games I'm playing because I've learned the rules. And when the times are tough, I've got just enough. If you're standing right by my side. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I think nobody ever needs to conclude the word darling in any song again. I think I don't enjoy that word. <laughs> darling, more and more I get hungry for all the ways you keep me satisfied. That's a little naughty. I, I kind of like that. Yeah, that's saucy. Because, you know, we're talking about food and then, uh, you know, naughty things. <laughs> On our own, there ain't nothing that we can't get through. And, oh, I like on our own. I do like that. On yeah, our that's... own is a good expression of an idea that we're alone, but we're alone together, so we're okay. Yeah, that's a contradictory phrase. Yeah. But when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Do as the Romans do. Um, that whole verse, now we're not, she's not going to work anymore. <laughs> in this verse. Now it's, he's complaining about his, his job. Yeah. Parading with all those other fools. 
He's <laughs> again the smartest guy in the office. Yep. The smartest I guy have, at the docks, yeah. I have always said that when I get in an elevator at work, I every time I end up with the five smartest people from their offices. Every time. They're like, they don't fucking know what nobody knows what they're doing up there except me. I do all the work. Every elevator conversation. I don't know where all the idiots from every office go. I don't know how they get upstairs. They take the stairs. They're morons. That might be, that might be why they're a little slow at work. Yeah. They're fucking exhausted from the stairs. Yeah. And they push, they try to push a button on the stairs. It's not there. They're very dumb. These people work with very dumb people. That explains all the fire drills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this, is this it? No, oh, I'm getting right. wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck uh then i don't mind you're he's repeating himself now then i don't mind masquerading with all those other fools i don't mind the games i'm playing because i've learned the rules it doesn't matter when we're home all alone all we've got to be is me and you on our own there ain't nothing we can't get through again when in rome do as the Romans do. Do as the Romans do. Do it. Do, do what they do. And yeah. since that's, that's a repeat, why don't you go ahead and finish us up? And uh, <laughs> there's a couple things I think about this. About to swing that hammer and break that stone. <sighs> Push the buttons and answer that phone. <laughs> Coffee in the morning and martinis at night. Everybody's working up a big appetite. Do as the Romans do. I'm going to tell you right now, right now, I can tell you how you know that he didn't put a lot of work into finishing this song. Because there's no way if he put just a little bit of time in the song that he wouldn't have gone, hey, can we get kind of like a hammer sound for the stone? And then let's get that phone thing back in here. Oh yeah, he fully would have. I mean, close so, out. Are we to assist? Is like, is his job breaking rocks? <laughs> if that's a prison. Yeah. It's just this is like one of those old chain gang songs at the end, or like it almost sounds like. Uh, an old gospel song or something. Yeah. Swing. Also, swing. You know, if it was like swinging a hammer and breaking some stones, would be one thing. But when it's swing that hammer. Yeah. Break those stones. It's just a little yeah, borrowy from a culture that is not his, if I may. Yes. You you can guess which one, Bruno. It's got a little, it's got a little Negro spiritual vibe. Yeah, that line just for one line. Yeah, and maybe not intentional, but probably intentional a little I, anyway. I think it was one of those things where, it was like, in his head, he heard it that way and was like, "Oh, great," without thinking, like, "Oh, I'm, I'm stealing by not thinking about this." <laughs> I, I guess accidentally, I culturally appropriated. He could be on, either, so his job, he could have a job working in construction, but he's the unskilled labor because he's the guy yeah. breaking, like if you're replacing a building, he's like, okay, you go break the things, then we'll get the smarties in to build the thing. <laughs> right. Can I you make, make half of what they Yeah. Can I make the cement? No, you're not ready to make the cement. Yeah, no, no, no. Keep watch. When they do it, you should watch. Yeah. Go watch for sure. Off the clock. Yeah. We're tired of you wasting bags of cement because you thought all it needed was water. Oh. <laughs> You're thinking of oatmeal. <laughs> but it's a common mistake. True story. When I was a kid, I ruined a bag of uh, cement my dad needed by trying to help. <laughs> the best. <laughs> uh, you never get trying to help though do you huh 
you don't get the credit for trying to help though. Oddly enough, like my dad was an odd duck because he could be, he could be angry and whatever, but at moments like that, he seemed to understand that I was a kid and he laughed oh, about it. Nice. Yeah. And he went, well, there's more to it than that, but uh, you know, no, I'll show you, you know. Nice. Yeah. I have, right. I have weird, right. a weird combination of memories of my parents. <laughs> it's all, yeah, that's starting to come out. Yeah. I've, uh, times like, I, I think I've told this story. I'll tell it really quick. One time yeah. when I was a kid, I got a thorough beating because I was late coming oh. home from my friends. Uh -huh. home. But I had told them, call me when it's time to come home. Oh, no. And they forgot. And I got oh, no. beating. And I was mad. And then they remembered. Oh, and no. He, and he apologized and said, sorry, I remembered this. And I said, fine. But this counts for next time or something like that. Because I, I wanted to bank one. And it, sure, pissed, him off. Yeah, and it pissed him off and he gave me a beating again. <laughs> That's true. Second. For trying to bank? Yep. I guess oh. you're not allowed to bank those. <laughs> so same. Now, separate incident. A little bit older. I was acting out for some reason. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. I had broken into our school. Wow. And graffitied on the place. Wow. Uh, had a juvie record at one point, briefly. My dad had to come take me out of the where the holding. And I thought, well, I guess this is it for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh He's driving, we're driving away and he goes, oh God, I really wish you would have done that. You know, that's, you're a boy. Kids are going to do stuff. You want to go get tacos? <laughs> wow. So really seems like it depended where you caught him in his day. Yep. And the joke I would always make is I go, were tacos always an alternative option? Because if so, always tacos. <laughs> we should have talked about this a long time ago tacos over the ass kicking yes oh. <laughs> so then the, the uh, end of this little oh go ahead you first oh please the Wrap end of this up. little ditty it's a lot of repeating and then he does you know I he probably did the breaking stone thing on purpose because he does a pseudo soul singer thing towards the end where he's you know do as the Romans do, where he's like, like laying it down and improvising or whatever. And then yeah, clearly yeah. it didn't work because they just drop out his audio and it's just the background singers going, do as the Romans do. And and then you see created by Belisarius, I think. Sure, sure which works. Yeah, sure, it sure works. <laughs> That's a better pick, yeah. <laughs> it just ends. Oh. I'm glad it doesn't do the fade out because I'd be insulted that they thought this was going to play on the radio. So, <laughs> right. It's good that it's got. I wonder how much that's a discussion when they're cutting. I guess they're like, this one's going to be on the radio, so we should give it a fade out. This one's not, so just wrap it up. Yeah. I wonder if that's like the main factor or feels like it, or, you know, at this time in history. I don't yeah. know if that's the case anymore. I don't know what happens on the radio anymore. Yeah. I think it will tell you that um, uh, your jobs are being stolen by Mexicans, right? That's what happens on the radio. That's definitely one of the things that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, or you know, you a Christ to save you. Yep, for just this amount of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think um I think it depends on the song. Like sometimes it's sometimes there's clearly an artistic choice was made by a band that's in charge of what's going on. 
And they're like, nope, yes. this song okay. is what they're doing. But there's definitely certain songs that are just like, sound like, oh, he didn't have an idea either. So, <laughs> right. Sometimes, it's like a lot of times, it's just like whatever the engineer thinks is yeah. fine. Um, yeah, I feel like if it's Billy Joel, he probably has strong feelings about 12% of the songs. <laughs> and then the rest is like, I, whatever they think in there. Yeah. I, I want to go back to Long Island now. Yeah, they didn't do much production on this. Again, I, I hope... I hope whoever's listening to this, watching this little show, I hope you listen to it because I think I'm right. I kind of want to go shoot this the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> the Romans. For sure, oh. by the way, the show is a, the guy has a wife where in real life, you're pretty sure no way. Yeah. There's a, definitely a King yep. Queens vibe here where you're like, no you two didn't right. get married. That also, didn't happen. He clearly hates him. Why is she staying? Yeah. For those two kids, like they're going to be 18 in like three seasons. Yeah. Like Ray Romano and Deborah, every, sure, they yeah. could be together. That King of Queens, there's mm -hmm. no fucking way, you guys. No. Okay. Nope. Yeah, that's and that's our other podcast where we just yell about how Kevin James couldn't get married to that lady. <laughs> oh, we got too many podcasts. Yep. Um, what do you think is the most sexist part of this song? Oh, so what jumps out at me is just, and it's not the character because the characters have the jobs they have. But if right. he pictures a lady working and she's for sure answering a phone and the other <laughs> and the man has a hammer. Oh yeah. That just feels super, super because even back then this would be 70s, right? Or a no 80s. 80s. Ah, yeah. yeah. Or 50s, depending on what you mean. Yeah, true. But yeah, just ladies had other jobs. It just seems, it seems a little much. But I guess if you could give him credit and just say, well, if it's a character and it's supposed to be, but it's just, eh. I mean, he's kind of a character. The crying it's, part. The crying is bad. And the phrase working girl. Yeah which is clearly off of the movie by the same title, but used to also mean hooker. Yeah. It, there's a whole lot going on here that's less than ideal. Yeah. <laughs> less than woke. Um, yeah. I, of all the things that offend me, though, I think it's just do as the Romans do. <laughs> Just instruct. She clearly she can hold down a full time job. She's not stupid. Right. But to tell her, <laughs> do office stuff at work. <laughs> okay. All right. You and you break rocks. This is such a that's such a good read to the song. It makes it even funnier to me. That's so lovely because. Oh. Like, so you know <laughs> you know that desk they give you. Sit at it. Don't lay on top of it like you're taking a nap. Sit at it. Yeah, yeah. So you're not not at home. You're not at home, so it's different. You know, um, keep shoes stay on. You know, don't don't get too comfortable. Don't get too comfortable. No naps for sure. <laughs> um, don't make long distance calls on their phone. Actually, don't do that at home either, because. We're working two jobs and we can barely afford this place. Yeah. I do love that anachronism of how you can't get by on one salary anymore. I'm like, isn't this a 50s song? <laughs> yeah, and I think... Or an, he, is it an 80s song? Oh, it's the 80s, but... Yeah. Not, 
musically. Yeah, it's absolutely 50s musically. But, like it. but barely. It would be like a wave song about uh, your new Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I know, but I got to be honest, I do not hate this song. I just don't. I I don't hate it. I think it's dumb. <laughs> but it, musically, it's fine. It just really, the lyrics are prominent. It's not one of those songs where you're like, I don't know what he's saying. Yeah. But it, it, it jams. <laughs> like, no, it's very clear. There's clear messaging. I say too, though, that the music and the lyrics fit so perfectly in how undercooked everything is and how, <laughs> yeah. And I like that about it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do like when I, again, like uh, Ballad of Billy the Kid, I love oh. because it's a state commercial. And this one I love because. Once the commercial's over, we're watching the Romans. We're watching the Romans. Oh, you could probably do a whole evening of television by just picking the right songs. Yep. And never <laughs> once, you don't even ever have to use my life, which actually was used for a TV show. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, he has TV theme song experience. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Do you know, have you ever seen the list that Vulture made where they ranked every Billy Joel song. All of them? Work. Every song. Um, check it out. It's very fun to read through. And you will learn that When in Rome is in the bottom five out of 122 songs. <laughs> oh, it's great. That's funny. And they have a little, little paragraph summation of every song. Oh, I wonder if I can find it without creating dead air. Yeah, I got it. So all of those lists while you're looking, I always think the struggle is the top five. Yes. The bottom five, you usually can work out fine. And you might have some disagreements, but nobody is nobody's go going no 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 that's fourth worst not fifth worst <laughs> nobody does that but it's that top five where you're like because scenes from an italian restaurant is somebody's number one piano man uh, here, here's here's the summation I, I lied it's not bottom five it's number 95 out of his songs Okay. And they say, I'm surprised this didn't click as a radio hit because it hits every mainstream note of that era, leaving it sounding a little generic. Could be Steve Winwood, could be the Traveling Wilburys, could be almost anyone. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's funny. What's their number one? What is their number one? I feel like it might be Vienna. I got to scroll a long way to get the number one, baby. Oh, Vienna's a good choice. Scrolling, let's see. Number one, scenes from an Italian restaurant. There you go. I mean, you can't argue with it because it's really three songs. Yep. It's it's right. absolutely masterful. And if we ever need to talk about a song a second time, we will, but I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to... Show you these fellas back here. See those fellas. Oh. Nice Boy. looking. Nice looking fellas. Nice looking fellas. I don't, it's hard to suss where they might be. Looks like a VFW hall or something. It sure does. Of some kind. Yeah, I will say. Well, man, I don't even have to give you much of a hint to at least get the idea of where these guys are. Yeah, it is yeah these are guys who probably served together uh-huh and they're probably yeah. in some kind of group 
like some sort of a veterans group uh yeah or so, something like that that old like fellows like this. it might be an aa <laughs> it might be <laughs> that's true uh, be old guys maybe they'll all go down together you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no i think these guys objectively avoided going down together because they're still around <laughs> Um, you think I could be talking with Davey, who's still in the Navy? Oh, well, that could be what's happening. <laughs> be, although that looks more like a fire chief uniform or something. Did you, was I talking to you about the first, the theory about the bar from Piano Man? Did we talk about that? I feel like you mentioned it. I don't know if it was your idea or somebody else's. I'm hoping it was somebody else's because I found it delightful and I wanted to share it, which is somebody mentioned that there's a, there's a, it was a Reddit thread where they like to imagine that this is a gay bar and the piano player is the only one who's never figured it out. Because <laughs> they talk about, <laughs> you know, he's still in the Navy, you know, never had time for a wife. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> i'm sure that i could be a movie star that sounds like some bitchy queen oh, yeah, yeah. guy who works in real he's a real estate agent i like that read of the song <laughs> that's a pretty fun read oh boy um, i'm getting nowhere well these fellas of course are probably hanging out this is a place they probably go to play games see shows sometimes like low rent shows not like show shows uh, cheap dinner they probably have a membership here <laughs> wow wow some sort of club yeah and they're very typical for fellas this age i don't know if they sometimes wear fezes i don't think they do right right they're like oh so they're in a lodge Masons? Are they Masons? Well, I'll tell you what. If you met them at this Elks. club, huh? Or Elks, maybe? Or the Kiwanis? Well, I'll tell you. If you met them at this club, great. If you encountered uh -huh. them in still water, terrible. <laughs> Mosquito larva? <laughs> They're in the Mosquito Larva Club. <laughs> You're so close. You know the Mosquito song? Yeah. Um, I think that's how you get this. <laughs> how you get this? Schistosomiasis? Well, it's... No, that's from the Nile. You get that in the Nile. It's a, it's a club or it's a disease. You're in the AIDS club. <laughs> that's that's right. <laughs> that's right. And we've been wondering why you keep missing meetings. <laughs> God. Um, so it's uh, oh, I, it's a, I had a beer this afternoon. Huh? I had a beer earlier and I <laughs> lost my mind. That, no, I'm enjoying the hell out of this. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's it's a yeah the it's a club or a yeah a brotherhood of some sort. Yeah, and a a, a a bunch of guys could be a battalion, or they could also be a platoon. Yep, they, they could be a company. Yep, a brigade. Yeah, uh, a formation. <laughs> it could be a. Uh, squad. Yeah, more old timey way to refer to them, I think. A little old timey. <laughs> a regiment. Oh, you know, and there, there's one of these of doom. Oh, man. <laughs> oh so there's the American Legion Hall. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I feel like gets mentioned in Allentown. No, I don't think so. 
there is a, a some mention of a hall of some kind. Yeah. A legion. Legionnaires to see. <laughs> right, that's you do get from Stillwater. I'm right, yeah. right? Okay, good. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. There is an outbreak here because of uh, air conditioner water. Oh. So, yeah, 11 people got sick in the Bronx a few years ago. Damn. Uh, legion. Oh, like lesions, like when you have AIDS? <laughs> How many beers did you have? <laughs> I had one, but it was this big. Yeah. Plus, it, it had a sat, German garden. Plus, it had sat there for a while, so you got Legionnaire's disease from it. <laughs> Which is terrible for your guessing gene, or it reconfigures your guessing genome. All right, I'll give you a little one more hint. Um, it is a much less. It's off of a much later album, and I don't think you love this album. Uh huh. Okay. I'm going through the song. <laughs> this be off River of Dreams. Yep. Hmm. Ah, uh, boy. It's not one I know well. Yeah. Clearly. Uh, Shades of Grey. There's a... Uh, 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 what else is even on that? Blonde Over Blue. A minor variation. Yeah. Those are uh, songs. <laughs> those, <laughs> those are the non-hits. Oh. Uh, buddy, I'm so lost. Oh, that's okay. Let me see if I can give you one more hint and then I'll just tell you. Um, okay. Um, I think Billy Joel would like it if he had a huge hit off this album, just huge, that people loved since I think it's his last album, right? I think so, yeah. So he would love it if people would think of one of these songs and go, oh yeah, that's the song. Yeah, like River of Dreams. Right. And, and, and if they was known, if, you know, that song was super popular and it was like last big song he did. Right. What those be? That'd be, a, that'd be a, a finale. Uh, it'd be going out with a bang. Yeah. Yeah. What would they say of the lyrics he wrote? Oh, those are repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> They would say uh, those are famous last words. Oh, wow. Famous what last. are you talking about? <laughs> famous last words. Yep, from the album River is, of Dreams. They're a Legion mentioned in. Yep. Uh, they're, so what they're, does Legion have to do with it? There's comfort in the in my coffee cup and apples in the early fall. They're pulling all the moorings up and gathering at the Legion Hall. Wow. I haven't heard that song in 10 years. I would bet. So ironically, all right. We're not doing it next week. I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. All right, so so much for the your streak of giving me early ones or easy ones. Right. Oh. Wow. That, well, <laughs> I, I, I am. I kind of liked the lyrics to this one, but not enough to go. Oh, I'll just pick this one. Plus, it's your turn anyway. <laughs> Although, how funny. There's the. Sorry, I, we're off track somehow, or I'm interrupting <laughs> you a lot. <laughs> it could be the lag, too, because there was a lag in the, but we're fine now. All right, you got some trivia for me, though. Um, yes, I tracked down the source material for the expression, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Where does it come from? I'm going to guess that it's something uh, John the Baptist said 
to keep from getting his ass kicked. <laughs> Very much the right track. Okay. I will, you know, I'll give you a half credit and I will tell you it comes from St. Ambrose. Okay. Who, uh, there is a story that um, another person who later became a saint as well, I guess they all later became saints. So it's just Ambrose. And someone came to him and said, hey, um, I'm from Milan and we fast on Fridays. Now I'm going to Rome next week. They fast on Saturdays. So what should I do, Ambrose? Shall I be true to my religion or do as the Romans do? And he said, look, when in Rome, and then he just trailed off because everybody knows the end of it. <laughs> but he knows. Oh, that's great. Said, and they just kept looking at him. Yeah. And he said, do as the Romans do. You, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> Fucking morons. It's not when in Rome, violate their traditions and get murdered. That's not the saying. Uh, I, I have heard another version, which is uh, when in Rome, get me a mug. <laughs> <laughs> I like that version. That That is actually still, people still do that to this day. They'll bring you a mug. And why is that? I don't know. I think when you're in a place, it, it's so hard to resist the pull of buying something with the name of the place on it. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Because I, when you get home, you don't care about the mug. Nope. And you didn't forget the place. Yeah, I, uh, I sometimes this will happen. It'll be my wife's birthday or it'll be Christmas or something or it'll be Hanukkah or whatever. And I'll be want, going to buy her a gift and I'll see a mug with a picture of something she likes or whatever. And I'll think, should I buy this for her? I'll think. And then because that's my only idea, I'll go, Jesus, how long have we been married? I should, I should know better than this. Are yeah. we get divorced? Like a mug? I'm going to get her a mug? So you don't buy the mug. I, mug, is like a, mug is like the punchline to like a weekend update joke where you're like, okay, that's the first punchline. Let's try again. <laughs> right. Mug yeah, is yeah. the first idea. Right. Think of it, throw it out. Now you're working. Now, what's the real and joke? Once you've thrown out two punchlines. Yeah. So yeah, same with gift ideas. Yep. This, the longer you're married, the more ideas you're throwing out. One year I got my wife because she's in the Hello Kitty a uh, Hello Kitty hat because it's kind of cold out and I thought she's going to love this and she opened it up and she laughed and laughed and laughed and I didn't understand why. Luckily, I'd gotten her some good gifts and she said, let me show you what you got me last year and it was identical. Oh, no. It was identical. Oh. <laughs> so this year, I got it for her again because now now it's thoughtful. Yes. Now you remember. Yeah. I remembered a funny story between us, and I got you a gift that pertains to the funny story. Yep. So here are three. It's great. Hats. Yeah. So you've made it work. It's almost like uh, banking a beating. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Banking a beating, the way you said it, like it's an expression. Oh, that's great. Yeah. When it I mean, now. It's, a, it's an expression right here, baby. When in Rome, banking a beating, you know, you know. <laughs> you know how it ends. <laughs> uh, uh, what Next are we um, I was looking at the very same list on Vulture, and very near the top is a song I forgot existed. And I was like, oh, it's very near the top of this list. I can't remember how it goes. I'll play it. Uh, and it's fantastic. I don't want to be alone. Now, in your head, can you hear that song? No. 
on the Glass Houses LP. Awesome. So we're doing, I like the, uh, I like the slingshot thing we're doing where it's like really serious, heavy, something trivial, not very good, very good. <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just so mix it up. So I think mine has got to be something. Oh yeah. Everybody knows that song. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure and you picture, back. can you picture that in your head? Yes, of course I can. I don't yes, have dementia. Let me, let me sing the whole thing right now. Yeah, I don't have dementia, unlike like this guy back here. All oh, right. Uh, legions. He's in the Legion of Doom. That's right. He's in the Legion of Doom. <laughs> oh, My wow. favorite part of that picture, by the way, is that one year on the road, I played at a place that looked pretty much just like that. And it was a, like, I believe it was an Elks Lodge. Wow. And it went great. It they did. Loved. They did. I talked about my dad a lot. I did a lot of the dad stuff. All right. With, with the shading of making sure that I'm not insulting him in the set. I'm going, my dad was a hero in World War II. Now listen to my jokes. <laughs> right. Here's why he stuck. Just like all of you. All of you guys. Greatest generation ever? My ass. Miley Cyrus. There's your greatest generation. I do like Miley Cyrus. I like Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah. Well, you should try that and then try to win them back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be alone. That's great. It's, it's and it's near great. the top of their list. Yeah. Rad. Wait, well, list you, you should read because it'll, it'll entertain you to no end. Well, I think that was a great episode. I, I think um, Alex has to go drink a second beer. So oh, oh. <laughs> I got to get some food in me. Yeah. 